Welcome new sixth graders! It's officially promotion Sunday. I cannot believe it guys. We are here. It is June, June 14th. Just making sure I have the right date. June 14th and we have new sixth graders. I am so excited because it would have been yesterday I saw you guys and we had our drive through promotion. It was so nice to see your faces, not just on a screen for me now or have heard your name and not seen you in person for the very limited time that Josh and I were on campus before we all left for quarantine. So I am so excited that you guys are officially joining us and it's gonna be amazing. So we do have some announcements before we step into our uh, sermon today, which is our need for community. So I'm going to get straight into the announcements. So after this, we have a sermon discussion. So on Zoom, we get to get together. We get to get together. Uh, we have the opportunity of coming together and discussing what we talk about in the sermon today, breaking it down a little bit deeper to understand how do we implement this into our lives. It's also just a really great time to be together um, and just sometimes we play games. Sometimes we just chat. It's whatever we need it to be for that day. So right after this sermon airs on YouTube Premiere, hop on to our website to get the link to our Zoom call. It's gonna be amazing. I'm so excited to see you guys. Then our next one is we will be beginning our summer life groups next week. So not this week, but next week. We will be breaking it down and that way we have opportunities to be together, get to know each other a little bit deeper, and then we will get pumped for our new life groups in the fall, but this summer is going to be amazing. So be looking out on our social media and in our newsletter for more information as to what that will look like. It's gonna be amazing. Then every Friday, we have our Friday Zoom games at seven o'clock. Honestly, probably one of the highlights of my week. I love it. We play goofy games and we just get to be together. Again, it's another opportunity to get together and have a like youth group without having to be on campus. It's great. But this week, we are having a special game. We are having our No Talent Talent Show. So you don't have to have any talents to show up because I will put you guys on a team and your team will have random talents assigned to you. And if you, if you are someone who's like, I like to keep my talents secret, Leah, that's really something that I, I don't want to just share to the world, like you're Spider-Man. I totally understand wanting to keep your secret identity. Please come and be one of the judges. We always need judges. So that is our No Talent Talent Show this Friday on Zoom at seven o'clock. Be there or be square. And then lastly, we have camp week coming up. So unfortunately, we're not able to go to campus by the sea this year, which is so sad. I was so looking forward to it because I've never been. But the greatest thing is, is that we are putting together an awesome opportunity for camp week, which will be happening the week of June 19th. We'll have a lot more details this week coming out to you guys in the newsletter. So be on the lookout for that. If you guys are not a part of the newsletter, you can sign up by going to www.lakeavenue.org backslash middle school. And at the very bottom of the page, you can sign up for our newsletter. Even if you were in Club 45's newsletter, you need to switch over to middle school. And for our seventh and eighth graders, you're already on it. Super solid. So with that, remember to follow us on social media because it is LAC underscore middle school on Instagram, uh, LAC middle school on Facebook, and then uh, LAC.org backslash middle school. So we have a sermon to talk about. I'm excited for today's. We're in our series of frequently asked questions and we are on week three. So week one, we talked about God creating everything and it was super intense and it was beautiful to see the pattern and the thoughts that God had while creating earth. And then last week we talked about God creating humans in his image. And so this was one of my favorite things because we recognize that we are all made in God's image and we have been commanded to care for what God has created. This week, we're going to be talking about humans again, but we're going to be talking about how we are built for community. So grab your Bibles. We are going to be reading in Matthew. We'll be in the book of Matthew reading chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. Okay. So let's crack open our Bibles. Matthew 22, verse 34 through 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. 
and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you that you are here with us. Whether we are in our rooms, we are in our living rooms, we are in our kitchens, we are in the outdoors, we are in a car, God, you are with us. God, I pray that as we learn about what community is required of us, how community blesses each of us, and God, how you shine through community, may you make your words evident and clear speak through me and may my words be a form of worship to you in Jesus name. Amen. All right, let's jump straight into it, into point number one, Jesus's purpose. So the whole thing is in verse 34 through 36, we see when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which command commandment is in the law is the greatest. So Here's the thing. The Sadducees are in charge of everybody. They're like the CEOs of the company, right? Then you have like VPs, which are vice presidents. So the Sadducees would be the CEOs and the Pharisees would be the VPs. So the VPs are in charge of basically like local churches. They would be pastors. They would be hands on deck serving the community. So these aren't bad guys. These are people who are trying to figure out why is Jesus saying these things like he is pushing back against what Yahweh what God has commanded us as Israelites so they're super confused and but at the same time they're trying to protect what they know so that's why they're challenging Jesus they're trying to see if he's going to slip up if he really means what he is talking about and if his answers actually follow the law which are the guides for the Israelites just as Jesus says his are so in this passage, we see that they go, if he was able to silence the CEOs, I want to know more about what is he talking about. Let's see if we can catch him in not just a lie, but catch him in confusion with the whole purpose of his message of, of the coming kingdom and him being the Messiah. So the lawyer is asking this question not simply because he's curious, but he hopefully tricks Jesus into proving what they all want it to be true, is that he's not the Messiah. So the religious leaders did not believe what he was saying. They were like, you're not the Messiah, super sorry, but that's not happening. Like, you haven't fulfilled the commandments of that. So we want you to say, or we want you to stay consistent with the Jewish laws of obeying God. And if you don't, then we have reason to prosecute you because you're going against the law. So Jesus was not tripped up by this question though, because this question is Jesus's purpose outside of being crucified for our sins and raising from the grave. So this passage right here is actually incredibly important to the Christian faith. It's called the great commandment. So we have the great commandment and the great commission, the great commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, uh, or all of your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Then we have the great commission, which is go out and make disciples of all nations. So this is the first one, the great commandment. So this is actually part of Jesus's purpose on earth, like I said, but the biggest thing is, is that we're seeing that Jesus is saying, we have more to do. And I am going to explain, like Jesus is saying, I'm going to explain to you how important it is to fulfill the law, not just abolish the law. And that's happening through me. So that's Jesus's purpose. Then we get to point number two, which is all, uh, all of you must love God. So this in verse 37 through 38, it says, he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And, uh, and this is the greatest, uh, and first commandment. So Jesus doesn't take away literally in the 10 commandments, which Moses was given on Mount Sinai from God. It's, it literally says, do not take the Lord's name in vain. So this is more than just saying like when you're fresh, you're saying, Oh my God, it's actually going against 
who God is and using God's name to justify wrongdoing. So Jesus is taking it a bit of a step further and saying, you need to love God with more than just your words and the way you present God through your words, but you need to be loving God through your heart, which is your emotions and the way you're responding with your soul, which is your basically your energy and your purpose and your mind. Think things through. Don't just act rashly. You need to be making sure that the decisions you're making are reflecting God. And that can only happen if you're using the brain God gave you. So this commandment is one that requires a full body understanding for the simple fact that it requires us to love God with our full bodies. So our soul is believed to be our entire essence and our entire being. So that is literally from our toes to the tips of our heads. And our hearts are, are not just our physical, like, boom, 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 boom. Um, back in Jesus' time, they believed that your heart was your feeling and your center and your source. So it's actually kind of cool because when we think of anatomy, your heart is your center. It is in the middle. This is what navigates everything. Your breathing, it, it oxidizes, oxidize, oxidizes, oh my gosh puts oxygen in your blood and your heart pumps that to all the areas of your body that is needed. That way your blood is always fresh. It's always flowing. It's not stagnant. So your heart isn't stagnant. Your soul is always moving and your mind is always running. I don't know about you guys, but I can sometimes have nights where my mind is just racing. And it's not about any specific thing. It's just my, I know that I'm thinking of a billion and one things at once and I can't quiet my mind, which causes me to be very tired the next day and need to take lots of naps. So I don't really like, it doesn't bother me because I love to take naps anyway, but it's just kind of one of those things where your mind's always going, your heart is always going and your soul is always going. And Jesus is saying, use all of that energy, those three energy sources to love God. So this commandment is the one that requires a full body understanding. And to love God with your entire being, you not only need to use all three of these sources of understanding, empathy, and love, but we, for example, like let's talk about our hearts. We need to allow our hearts to break for what breaks God's injustice, um, allowing people to be harmed, allowing bad things to happen in front of us, that breaks God's heart because God has called us to a unity that can only be done through him and through each other is standing up for one another. So things like that of heart injustice, but then it's also the overwhelming joy that God feels when someone accepts Christ and steps into the kingdom of God and says, I accept Jesus as my Lord and savior. And I know that what he did on the cross was to save me from my sins. And that's the only way to get to heaven. That kind of over, I get chills. That kind of overwhelming joy is also what needs, what God needs from our love of all full body. God looks out for the Israelites. So what we're talking about here is like, so often in the Old Testament, we see these acts of God being hurt or being heartbroken over injustice, um, but also showing justice, mercy, and compassion. So in the Old Testament, we see with the Israelites, there were a lot of times where they frustrate God, where they go against God's will, and they anger him. And so with that, we see that God still shows mercy. It may take time, but God always shows mercy to the Israelites when they don't deserve it. And it's the last thing that they should be receiving and God frees them. So for example, God looks out for the Israelites by having, by who are looked down upon and treated terribly by other tribes and kingdoms, for example, like Egypt. So they won against God's um, commands. So they were enslaved in Egypt, but God showed them mercy by releasing them through Moses. And so it's this full circle of an Israelite releases Israelites by becoming and loving and being a part of the Egyptian community, which gets us into our third point. To love your neighbor is to know your neighbor. So in verse 39 through 40, we see, and a second is like it. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
and these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So what God is, or what God, what Jesus is saying right here is he's like, the next is to love your neighbor. And this encompasses everything that God commanded the early Israelites to. So love God and love your neighbor. To truly understand what this kind of love means, let's define define like what kind of love that we're referring to here. So there's the idea of like me saying I love pizza. Like I've had pe like cold pizza for breakfast for the last two days. It's been incredible, and I love pizza. Hawaiian pizza is the best. Pineapple belongs on pizza. But on top of that, there's a different kind of love that we don't always think about that is completely different than my love of pizza. So love is defined as a strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties. So a lot of us could say that we love God, not just because we're told to love God from when we were little, but because we learn about who God is, because we've also seen God. We see what God's doing in our lives. We see what God's doing around us and we have a personal connection and tie to God through the stories that we learn about him through the Bible. That therefore we can love God. Now here's the tricky part. To love a neighbor that we don't know, have never met before, things like that, might seem incredibly difficult, basically impossible. Like let's for the sake of argument talk about a a neighbor that I'm talking about. I've never met her before. I don't know anything about her, but I want to show her this love that Jesus is commanding. So I buy her flowers. But when I give her the flowers, she says thank you, it's very kind of me, and I realize that she starts breaking out in hives. She's allergic to these flowers that I bought her. So it doesn't take away from the fact that the gesture was kind, the gesture is showing love, but not the love that Jesus is talking about. Now, how could I have known? I don't know her. So how could I have known she was allergic to the lilacs, you know? Um, but here is the thing, the way that I could have avoided getting Kelly sick from lilacs is by getting to know her. That's what this portion of the great commandment gets into in order to love your neighbor as yourself, you must be in community with your neighbor in order to love that neighbor. So it's a little bit harder than we initially think. Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, that means treat everyone the way you wanna be treated, right? Well, yes, but how do you know how you wanna be treated? Because you know yourself. Because you've learned your likes and your dislikes. You know how your body operates where I am slightly allergic to birds, super random, not super allergic, but slightly allergic. So I know that having a pet bird, I can't keep the cage in my room. It has to be in like a living room where there's a lot of movement and circulation, um, but I can't sleep in a room with a bird. The only way I know that is because I've spent time with myself. I've gotten to know to recognize, oh, I feel sick every time I'm in a, like a closed space for a long time with a bird, weird. So that's how we have to get to know each other. You have to understand what that neighbor needs in order to supply that need. So here are my final thoughts. Before we go, I wanna make one thing clear. Jesus never clarifies who our neighbors are. And I believe that that's very intentional. Jesus, if he had said, love your neighbors, you know, like your next door neighbors that you live next to, like their door is next to yours, or it's the other house, or it's across the way, like that's your neighbor. Jesus is talking about our neighbors because technically we all live together on planet earth, right? So technically we're all neighbors. We all live next to each other. So to me, I interpret this as Jesus calling us to love everyone, to love one another as if we live next door to each other. So this includes people at our church, in stores, at a restaurant, or our literal next door neighbor, if that's the case. We are called to love each one because each one is a perfect and wonderful image of God. And we are called to love God with our, all of our hearts, minds, souls. So to love God is to love our neighbor. So why not?
this is my week's this week's challenge for you i want you to get to know someone better now it could be intimidating at first to hear that but it could be someone in your life group it could be someone that you see all the time that maybe you are like i need to take some time to get to know them a little bit better it could be someone in your family for all like i know it could be someone that you're like you know i obviously have known my brother for 24 plus years but i don't think i've ever known like what his favorite childhood memory is so asking harder questions than what's up how was you how was your day i want you to ask questions and mean it so if you're going to ask how was your day i want you to truly be sitting down and asking your mom hey mom how was your day how are you doing are you tired are you happy are how are you doing and when they give you an answer you could do stuff with that i'm doing great you know i have really been enjoying um going for runs lately and it's just been so nice to like come home and sit down and just relax so then you can keep that in mind that when your mom gets home from a run she wants to sit down and she wants to relax so that's one way of loving her is you can just not bother her but i want you to figure out what that means to you what does that look like for your neighbor and yourself we are built to be in community it is literally one of two commandments that Jesus gives us. So how are you going to care for your neighbor this week? You guys are awesome. This is wonderful. And let's pray. Gracious and holy God, I pray that you make it clear who our neighbor is. That God, you put a neighbor right in front of us this week. And you make it so evidently clear who we need to learn to love this week. Give us the words to ask them questions. Give us uh, imaginations to create ways to care for them. God, help us go above and beyond this week for those around us. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Toodles.